hello and thanks for joining us. I'm Dolly Isaac, Partner Development Manager with Amazon Web Services Worldwide Public Sector, and I am joined by Mike Colson, Senior Solutions Architect with AWS Public Sector. Today we are talking about risk mitigation in the context of disaster recovery. So welcome, Mike. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Mike, I see that you've got this diagram on the board. Uh, tell us what you're thinking here, and also what, what should customers be thinking about when they are putting a DR plan in place? Sure. So the first thing that we need to think about is recovery time objective and recovery point objective. And the reason we need to think about these is because they're really the, the core and foundation for any disaster recovery, coop, or, uh, or even backup target program that we have to look at. So that's the first thing we want to do. And so I thought it would make a lot of sense to start there. So RPO, or recovery point objective, and RTO, recovery time objective, RPO is really the time between when you have a good data set and you know that this is a known good. And then that to the disaster will indicate the time loss. So this is all data loss between when you last had your known good backup and when the disaster actually occurs. So this actually helps kind of set the criticality of the application and the data sets that, that it's dealing with. Uh, and it's important to have that RPO understood uh, so that you can kind of judge which way you want to go with the application design and architecture. RTO, on the other hand, is a recovery time objective. So this covers the point in time where you regain operations of the application. So full operations capability coming back online. And that's taking into account that uh, replication for the data set from your backup or how you want to build it out, or even if it's an active active environment so that we just cut over the connection into the active site. And AWS has a lot of great solutions for how we're able to accomplish this. And it's a, it's a mix of, you know, RPO and RTO to make the determination of how we want to do that design. So let's kind of dig into some of those designs. So here we're showing an on-premise application, some AWS components, and we're going to talk through first uh, how we do a pilot light application. A pilot light application is the minimal infrastructure in AWS that you would require in order to be able to, to do something like a coop or a DR. So an application riding on on premises would have a health check tied in through something like Route 53, which is our global DNS service. So the health check would would route into Route 53 from the application, basically uh, validating that it has connectivity, typically through a C name uh, or a record to, to validate that the connection uh, and, and keep alive is, is there and available. So TLS based uh, application checks. And then if the application were to fail, it would call a Lambda function, which would instantiate the EC2 instance being built out. So this could be based off of a backup that's been replicated to the S3 bucket sitting in the environment. It could just be a, a template that's been created using a AMI, a EC2 AMI. Uh, this is one option, right? But the, the ability to spin up that EC2 instance may take a little bit longer. And so we get into that RPO conversation. Well, is it, is it fast enough? Uh, it could take a couple minutes or, or more to be able to have this application spawned and ready to go. So how would I be able to solve this in a warm standby scenario? Well, for a warm standby, I could actually have this EC2 instance already available and running. Um, and then I would do a similar function where the application would would say, okay, I've, I've fallen off. Route 53 would check via the, the health check. It would call Lambda, but instead of having to spawn a, a new instance, it would actually write to auto scaling group and the auto scaling group could then set a max size of two and a new instance would spawn. And now I have two versions of that instance which I can load balance across, right? And, and that would be available until the, the site came back online from an on-prem perspective and then I could scale back down. Mm -hmm. For a hot hot or active active environment, I would actually be running the application stack in both environments and there, without having to, to require too much effort, I could have both applications load balanced up to Route 53, and then Route 53 also pointing into my EC2 instance with a load balancer in front of it. And immediately, if this site goes down, I automatically spin to this site, and I can change the 
auto scaling group to equate to whatever the workload is on prem. And because we have the, the capability to do this across multiple regions, I have the ability to spin this up globally really quickly. That's, that's great. Thank you so much. So you look, sounds like customers have lots of options. Yeah. They have lots of options depending on whatever they choose their RPO and RTO should be, right? So like if we were to take that a little higher, right, and into a, a broader perspective, why do customers go to cloud architecture you know, when it comes to DR? Right, so there's actually a couple really great reasons to look at cloud for, for DR or, or Coop. Um, and first of all, it's cost. It would cost a lot to have all of that uh, additional gear sitting on prem. And the geographic uh, disparity of having the ability to spin across all those 18 regions worldwide and the way that AWS builds out their, their region footprint with multiple availability zones and multiple data centers in each AZ uh, allows for uh, a greater flexibility in the way that we would be able to deploy out in, in case of a disaster and, and rapidly deploy because we could build all of this into CloudFormation templates and deploy infrastructure as code. But beyond that, uh, the capability to monitor all of this, both on-prem and in the cloud environment, centrally look at how things are working top-down and have health checks that can monitor both sides and cut workloads over based off of uh, different requirements and automate that process. I think that's really where the, the power of cloud uh, resides. That's awesome. Mike, thank you so much for yeah. sharing your insights and thank you for tuning in. If you have any questions or comments, follow us on Twitter at AWS underscore gov, or you can send your questions directly to Mike at Mike underscore Colson. Thanks for watching.